Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hilal Live. Thanks for watching us on Channel 347. It's the sports edition on a Friday. The jacket's off, the tie's off, and uh, it's all about sports. And we've got a lot happening a bit later. We've got some cricket and soccer coming up. But for now, we focus on the Blitzbocker. And in studio, I have uh, the honor and privilege of speaking to one of our local heroes who plays for the Blitzbocker, the Sevens team. That's uh, the Dubai tournament coming up soon, and the Cape Town Sevens as well. Zane Davids, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Shukran for having me. Yeah. My absolute pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for taking the time to come and chat to us as well. Uh, you've had such a wonderful career as well. For, the, for those that don't know too much about how you got into rugby, give me a little bit of history. Where did, you, where did this all start? Where did you go to school? I think I'll probably have a long story to <laughs> say though. But uh, <clears throat> my mom actually wanted me to play soccer first. Okay. Um, my dad was not a kid, so I see because obviously he played rugby and right. his family played rugby. So he said, okay, I want you to play rugby. So I was like, okay, yeah. you can go play rugby. So my dad took me to Matthias, but I never had a junior set up at that time. Right. And so he said, okay, there's another few clubs. So I went to Primrose. Nice. Yeah, so yeah. I started my career at Primrose at the age of 11. Mm -hmm. So I started playing rugby at 11. I'm like, okay, I'm finding my feet slowly but surely. Went to Western Province Trials at 11, never made it. Right. So at the last, the last of the trial. And so on the 12, I went, okay, I'm getting another angle of it. And on the 13, yeah, yeah. I made it for the, I think it's the academy squad, Western right. Province. Right. So my career started at, at Primrose. Brilliant. And uh, this, how old were you then? I was 13 years 13. old. 13. And then from there, you, uh, I know for the under 21 squad, you were also um, province cap? Province cap, yeah. But before that, we obviously got the scholarship to run the bus because nice. obviously it's quite tough if you buy Primrose. Trying to go to for Western Province trials, you not really going to make it. Obviously, get the poor schools, the yeah. uh, bishops, and those girls. So I got the scholarships to run the bosch and I went for trials. Obviously, so I made it on the 16 Grand Como. Mm -hmm. Played Craven Week, my grade 11 and matric year. And after matric, I went to the junior box. So I played two nice. years for the baby box. So from there, then we went afterwards to under 21. So mm -hmm. I played Western Province. We won, I think, I think about 2017, 2018, 2017. We won the under 21. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. What a lovely career as yeah. well. And I would imagine at the time when you were at school, a lot of pressure being at school and also competing on this level. How did you uh, manage that? I, th I think with this level, my I'm playing, I'll be much tougher, obviously, because okay. international. But obviously, I was a youngster, my trick. Mm -hmm. It's all like all eyes on you. Of You're course. playing a derby against bishops. It's a big thing. Yes. And I never had that coming growing up because I was playing club rugby. And you see, I actually went, whoa. <laughs> it's actually big and there's a lot of supporters coming to watch and support you. Right, right. Blitzbock, uh, such an amazing uh, team. They've done so well over the, the very many years as well. Uh, have you traveled to other countries as yet? Uh, <laughs> Not yet. I started, I have been, okay. um, I started, actually started my, my series career 2017. That's when I made my debut okay. in Wellington. Brilliant. So I've been traveling from, actually from 2017, 2016 already, mm -hmm. all over the world. What, what are some of the countries you've been through uh, and uh, what, <laughs> what has your, your experience been like? So I think it's for, I was a youngster when I was 19, I was like, it's amazing to travel like this and seeing play, other professional players because I was a youngster, like, mm. wow, I'm actually playing the guitar, I used to watch you now the other day and I'm yeah. on the same level as you now. Brilliant. And I think it just gives me more motivation just to be a, to be a, an example of with other guys that's playing club rugby or, or as looking up to you. Stanley, some of the countries you visited, which is your favorite at the moment? I think it'll be Hong Kong. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And Hong, Hong Kong Sevens is Hong amazing. Hong Kong is amazing. It's, it's not the same like Cape Town, but the crowd is a lot of South Africans in Hong Brilliant. Kong. So I think it'll be Hong Kong in Canada, though. Nice. Yeah. Great. Look, two rugby nation um, that's doing so well in the uh, international sphere as well. And I think uh, what's our chances this this round, this year round? I mean, you've got the Dubai Sevens coming up. Yeah. And then you've got the uh, Cape Town Sevens coming up as well. Mm -hmm. What's our chances? Yeah, no, obviously, <laughs> I believe in our team because obviously we had a dub last year and I know with the new coaches, we have to find our feet, mm -hmm. not always going to be perfect. But I think our guys is pulling through and we obviously all in one direction, we all want that gold medal. Mm -hmm. So I believe in the guys, we were really working hard in camp and I think the guys will pull through this season is coming up. Brilliant. Uh, we've got a lot of talent in Cape Town as well. Sevens, uh, not so big as the club rugby. Yeah. Uh, are we finding a lot more people starting to compete in sevens now than maybe a couple of years ago? I think the sevens is actually going to be big on stage now as well. And I think a lot of guys, because we had a tournament <clears throat> last weekend, mm -hmm. two weekends ago, 
So a lot of clubs that we play, and you can see the talent that's coming through the. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I think obviously our coaches will always keep an eye on them, and I know they'll definitely the guys that's playing club rugby will definitely get the opportunity somewhere. Yes. So I think it's just they just need to get that extra work work mm-hmm. ons on them so they can be better in their own position. Mm. But I think there is actually a lot that's coming through. They just need that the support. Yeah, I think that's all. You know, sport in, the, in our country has always been sort of a part-time type of uh, thing where you've had to work and maybe, you know, or go to school and do sport. But however, the game's changed now where it's become big business yeah. and uh, your career is now starting to take off as well. Um, what's that been like, that trajectory from playing school rugby to now pr- playing club rugby or professional rugby, international rugby? Uh, has it been a bit of a, a mind change, a paradigm shift? Uh, I think it'll definitely be a mind changer as well because school, like, obviously you still have school, yeah. you're doing that, you're doing something, you're just having fun at that time. Yeah. But I was always in a big platform now, you can't actually have fun, you have to enjoy it now, you have to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. Coming to the work, into any work, you have to enjoy what you're doing, you have to be there, give you 100% commitment. Yeah. And I think also my mind changed, like I think Coach Neil, Neil Powell, when he was yes. our coach, I think he matured us actually, and he actually right. driven us like, guys, you have to do this, you have to enjoy it. It's mm. not the kids part in now, you have to Brilliant. do it. And I think I just learned a lot from him as well. Right. You played for the Sharks. Uh, is Neil Powell now coaching the Sharks? Yeah, no, he's the, actually the director. Director. Of, wow, yeah. so he's taking over John Smith's position. I John Smith used to be there as well. Yeah, but, okay, yeah. that's fantastic. Well, the Sharks is always a formidable force as well. Uh, what's your thoughts on the World Cup that we South Africans walked away as uh, victors? Uh, <laughs> countries come together after that victory. What's it been like for you? Uh, I think South Africa, we actually did well. I think Russia actually said that they actually better, better prepared this World Cup than 2019. Mm-hmm. And I think I can give it to the guys, obviously, that they, they pulled through, even though we won the one point, but the win is sure. a win right. from the quarters to the semis, but the guys gave it them all. Mm-hmm. But I think for South Africa to, to win the World Cup this year, again, I think it really bring the nation together. Mm-hmm. It's like that was a, they said the logs like stronger together. So of I think the, the people of South Africa are stronger together with all the stuff that's happening. South Africa now with the low cheering, not Absolutely. just that, but I think also the poverty is happening. And I think that just have more belief to see where South Africa is and that we can become one nation again yeah. and we can all just move forward. From it. Besides the top four teams that qualified for the court for the semis and then the finals, uh, any other teams and players that uh, you were impressed about? I think actually the quarters are <laughs> only the scores, and I think actually Fiji though they Brilliant. actually they actually played well. That was my team of the tournament, yeah, I must say. And I had really a lot of respect. I think it's one of the players there. His son passed away. Correct, and he still ma- managed. And he still to managed play. to play and pull up a performance like that, <laughs> losing against England. I think it's England yeah. by two or three points. I think yeah. they have to take that with him. They actually came here. They mean business. Absolutely. I think Fiji proved that um, the bottom of the table teams. Uh, don't write them out. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, this with any team. Of course. And a lot of the teams like Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, those players tend to get taken up by New Zealand and Australia uh, and some other countries as well. We had that brilliant uh, player from Ireland as well. Uh, that was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think we saw a very different World Cup this year. There, there was no guarantee on who would go through to the quarters and because from the quarters every single game was just and you know when I started started watching the first game and I came to work uh, I think it was the next day and I said wow what an amazing game and (laughs) the game after was even better than that as well so it just proves that rugby is a game that uh, you you need to play 80 minutes yeah I don't think it's just 80 minutes probably 90 minutes you have to push it right through (laughs) it's also true yeah so for those that are watching this interview, um, what's your training regime like? I mean, is it seven days a week, um, twice a day? T- talk to us about that. It's from Monday to Friday, but okay. it's Monday, Tuesday we'll train, and then we'll have Wednesday off, but okay. it's not basically off day, it's a recovery day. You have right. to still like, do something active, okay. like an active recovery. So we'll go Thursday and Friday. But I think our more chilled or relaxed days will be Monday and Tuesday. Then the Wednesday off become the Thursday and the Friday will be the more hectic uh, training sessions because we obviously train harder than the game. Of course. So we when we play the game will be much easier for us. But I think we when we come on the field as hundred percent every time the guys will give you ratings out of ten, eight, nine. Sure. So, but the guys always one step up every time. There's one percent every session. So, I would imagine with sevens, there's a lot of cardio that that you need to do. Cardio, not just cardio, mostly running on the field. So (laughs) we will run a lot of Broncos. We'll do bleep tests and stuff. We have cardio now. We're doing gym cardio now and then. 
but mostly run on the field. That, yeah. For those that are listening to the interview, watching this interview, younger, um, you know, rugby players, what advice do you have for them? I think I know a lot of people always say that, but I think always be humble because tomorrow you want to, you have a talent, but tomorrow will maybe promised or like that. I, I think it's just have respect also for your family, for your parents Great. and your mother, because they're actually the ones that they look after you, they gave everything for you, and they just wanted the best for you. So I think just respect your parents and be humble and just Brilliant. keep on working hard. Brilliant. Zane, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Jazakallah so much for coming into studio, yeah. sharing your journey, sharing your story, and may all your future projects go from strength to strength, inshallah. inshallah. My absolute pleasure. Keep doing what you do and flying at the South African flag very high. Oh, should be Up so there we go, Zane Davids, uh, part of the Blitz, Blitz Boca in studio. Uh, the Dubai Sevens coming up sh uh, shortly, and also the Cape Town Sevens uh, coming up as well towards the end of or the mid uh, December. So look out for those. After the break, we uh, do our cricket uh, World Cup roundup and uh, we touch on some soccer as well. You are still watching Hilal Live.